As the largest black and brown community west of Chicago, Crenshaw is one of the most culturally significant and influential places, not only in Los Angeles, but across America. With a bank branch on this site for nearly 40 years, our reimagined community center represents Chase's commitment to double down with the community and invest in the surging corridor to serve as a community staple in Crenshaw for years to come. Located across from the vibrant and growing Lemert Park and adjacent the new Metro Line expansion, the Chase Los Angeles Community Center serves as an accessible and convenient destination for all of South LA. The LA Community Center has been transformed into a space to where everyone in the community can become more financially fit. Local entrepreneurs and homeowners can now explore ownership and the next generations can build skills for the future. It comes equipped with the state-of-the-art virtual theaters, free Wi-Fi, expert-led workshops, and space for community leaders and businesses to be showcased at no cost. The vast majority of our investment was spent on local minority-owned contractors and suppliers, continuing to circulate opportunities back into South Los Angeles, which is Chase's priority. No matter where or if you bank, our goal in Crenshaw is to bring the community together in a collaborative, uplifting, and empowering environment. Today is an exciting day for LA. Please join me in welcoming Lawrence Bailey, Managing Director and Head of Community Banking and Business Development. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Uh, Kevin actually took most of my talking points, so I'm just gonna go sit down and let the party get started. Um, but as Kevin said, like we're super excited for everyone to join us today uh, at the grand opening of the Crenshaw Community Banking Center. Let's make some noise for that, you guys. As Kevin said, I'm Lawrence Bailey, the head of community banking and business development. And I couldn't be more excited about today uh, as a person who considers himself a native California living here for 29 years. This is personal for me. It's personal for our bankers. It's personal for the community. And quite frankly, it's personal for the firm to make sure that we can have an impact in the community here in Crenshaw. So we're just super excited about today. So let's get the, the, the party started. But some fun facts about Crenshaw. So Kevin talked a lot about Crenshaw and, uh, and I've driven up and down Crenshaw Boulevard now for, for years and years and years. Um, but it is definitely known as the cultural, the cultural icon, the background for LA, specifically for African-Americans. And when I say cultural background and cultural, the core, I'm talking about whether it's art, music, food, small businesses, people all coming together to celebrate life, to celebrate love, to celebrate LA, the city of champions. And when I talk about champions, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to the LA Lakers and LA Dodgers. This is the home of champions. What's interesting about this particular neighborhood though, as you start to drive around is it's a melting pot of all types of folks, all walks of life, African-Americans, Latinx, Asian, white, all economic levels. You'll see right behind here, you'll see homes that are a couple million dollars and across the street, you'll see apartments with bars on the window. So a not so fun fact is 19% of the population in Crenshaw is living under the poverty line, 19%. Let that soak in. And those are the families and those are the people who are hit the hardest, which is why coming together with a community center like this, this is our focus. This is how we will uplift the community because when those 19% of the people suffer, the whole community suffers. As we say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And we are here to make sure that not only do those 19% of the people survive, but they thrive. Not only does all of the, the Crenshaw community survive, but they thrive. And this is why we're here today with this amazing center, 4,700 square feet of just amazement. So let's give a shout out for all the folks here today too. So a couple of things I wanna talk about before we get the, uh, the program started, but our whole commitment in terms of what we're doing is really to, to have impact in the community. And a community center like this is the sixth of its kind. We're gonna have 16 community center branches across the country, predominantly in our major cities and the areas within those major cities where we think we can have impact. But we're also gonna have the expansion of an additional 134 branches. where We're remodeling, we're adding community space so we can have events like this across the entire country. In addition to those 134 community branches, we are hiring 150 community managers 
and we have our very own Jordan King, who you'll hear from later, our community manager here in LA. Let's give Jordan a shout out as well. So a little bit about the community center. I get asked all the time, like, what is a community center branch? Well, just think about it this way, in the simplest way. You have a retail branch with home lending specialists, business specialists, bankers, wealth advisors, and now you have a community center all under one roof. You have the entire community, our nonprofit partners who are here today, our small business owners are here today, our government officials who are tuned in today. We're all coming together under one roof to say, how can we teach financial literacy with a journey to get to a financially healthy community? How can we not just close the racial wealth gap, but how do we create generational wealth that can be left for decades and decades to our family and to our children? And that is the mission of this community center. So let's give a shout out for that to you guys. I'm gonna cue you guys up for when you guys clap, just so you know, right? I have the podium, when I say clap, this is what we're gonna do, okay? But one thing I, I would end with, uh, and I always say this too, um, financial literacy is one thing, but being financially healthy is a totally different thing. And I tell this story all the time. I have a physical and my doctor tells me all the time, you know what you should be eating, you know you should be exercising. I know those things are key to my health. That's the literacy part, but how do I make sure that I'm actually applying those things so I'm healthy? And that's the same thing with money, teaching people how to make sure they have a budget, how to have a savings plan, how to make sure they borrow wisely, how to make sure they have a long-term plan for retirement. That's gonna be the financial health piece that we're gonna do right here in this community center. So with that being said, uh, I wanna thank a few people uh, that made this all happen. I don't wanna forget anyone, so if I do, I apologize. But let me start with the real estate team and John McGinley. John McGinley, if you're out there, your whole team, this is 4,700 square feet of the best innovation, the best art, the best culture, all under one roof. So I wanna give a shout out to John McGinley and his team. I also wanna give a shout out to our corporate responsibility partners who really went into the community, help us understand what were the needs of this particular community uh, and all the community leaders that came in service to this, to this day. A big shout out also to all of our partners in the audience, our home lending partners, our business banking partners, Chase Wealth Management partners, the small business that are here today as well, as well as the politicians, all of us came together for today. So a big thank you to you as well. And, and definitely last but not least, I wanna give a shout out to all of our employees. And I'm looking out here about all the employees that work today uh, and worked every day. And I wanna give you a special shout out. Uh, you guys are essential. You've been essential through the whole pandemic and you came to work every day. You also stayed here and made sure while this branch was under construction, we stayed open. And thank you to all the customers who came in every day with the nails and the hammers and all the stuff going on. We had to stay open because we are essential, not just to this community, but to the whole country. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our Chase employees for everything you do. Big shout out to all you guys. So now I get the, uh, the exciting uh, honor to introduce uh, today's agenda. Uh, we have the support of a whole bunch of folks today. And I'm just looking around at the folks in the audience, the folks on Zoom. We have LA Laker, Derek Fisher, legend. We spoke to him yesterday. He's so excited about the community. We spent some time talking to him yesterday. You're gonna hear from Derek Fisher as well. Compton native, Compton native, Marcellus Wiley, NFL vet, 10 years, very socially active. We call it woke because Marcellus Wally is woke. He's also the star of a Fox uh, radio show. He's on TV. He joined us also. He's gonna give us some thoughts around the impact we wanna have in this community as well. So let's give Marcellus a shout out again. We have Mr. Greg Doolin in the house too, who's uh, his whole family is, is um, that family. I was doing some research and talking to Mr. Doolin before we sat down. They are a staple of this community. They are leaders in the business, leaders in the community. And he's here today. Uh, on behalf of himself as an entrepreneur, but he also has his food truck outside. And I can't stop looking at that truck right now. It's killing me, I'm getting hungry every day. So we appreciate you coming too, sir. We have the owner of South LA Cafes here as well. So we're gonna hear from you as well, right? And it's funny how it's a small world. I walked in uh, to the building and I ran into Tanua, 
Uh, and she was like, oh my God, even through the mask, we recognize each other. I'm like, oh my God, she, le she leads the List project. She's leading our Send LA project. And when I saw her, I was just so excited to see you again. It's good to see you and thank you for being here today as well. So I have the honor and privilege to inter uh, introduce a very special guest. Um, and he's joining us now. He's the chairman and CEO of JP Morgan Chase, Mr. Jamie Diamond. Thank you, LB. I'm sorry I can't be there today, and I can't wait to visit our new community center in Crenshaw, Los Angeles. It's thrilling to be here. It's thrilling to open our sixth community center in the United States of America, and this is the largest black and brown community uh, west of Chicago. We've made a huge commitment, $30 billion racial commitment across affordable housing, mortgages, small business, education, to help the brown and black community do a, to grow and expand and become more prosperous, and this is one example of that. Everything we do only really matters when we do it at the local level. How many kids do we help in that community? How many small businesses do we help in that community? How many mortgages or affordable housing units do we help get created in that community? And uh, so I really appreciate everyone showing up here today. This is just a small part of our commitment. I also want to thank LISC. I know we're helping the Ascend uh, group grow and expand uh, in LA. Uh, the fellowship initiative, which we started, I think, 10 years ago in LA, we've been expanding, and that's to get younger 10th grade uh, black kids out of uh, troubled neighborhoods, out of graduation into college and been an enormous successful. So sorry I can't be there. Uh, please enjoy the celebration. I can't wait to visit in person. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for all that you do to widen the economic opportunity for the Southern Los Angeles area. So really, we can't wait to host you in the ranch as well. I'm Stevie Barron. I'm the head of uh, consumer branch banking here at Chase. And it's really a privilege to be joined with you all today. And like everyone else has said, I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but as the Crenshaw Community Branch knows, I was there last week uh, and I got to spend you know, a couple hours with the team and we have handpicked a group and assembled an amazing group of folks that cannot wait to give back to the Crenshaw community. And so to all the employees in the branch, thank you so much for all that you do and all that you will continue to do for the Crenshaw community. Hey, Elby, can you get that whole clap thing going for me? I can't hear you all, but hopefully there's a good round of applause there. Um, when we just think about the opportunity right now and what has transpired in the last 15 months with this pandemic, our branches have been there for our customers. And our customers need our help now more than ever. And that's no more true than in the Crenshaw Community Branch. And our branches are a place for our customers to come in, meet face-to-face -face with our fantastic bankers so they can open their first checking account, their first savings account, they can purchase their first home, and they can start to save for retirement. You've heard a lot of folks talk about Crenshaw Community being the sixth community branch. Well, I'm gonna change the narrative a little bit. It's our first community center branch in the state of California, and we're so excited about that. And you've heard from, from Lawrence and from Kevin talk about why these community branches are so important. Well, we had a vision back in 2019 and we opened up our first branch here in Harlem in my backyard. And our vision was to shift from community banking to community building. And we've been able to accomplish that, which is why we have six sites now. We've launched branches in Minneapolis, in Dallas, in Chicago, in New Orleans. Obviously I talked about Harlem. And then today we're super excited about the Crenshaw Community Branch. And it's all about giving back to the community. It's about expanding the four walls of our Chase branch to the Crenshaw community, inviting folks in for workshops and seminars to learn about financial health, to bring entrepreneurs and small business owners so they can showcase their products at, at, at our storefront, so we can bring non-for-profits to leverage our Wi-Fi and our conference space so they can meet with their constituents as well. So we're so excited uh, enough talking about, we just can't wait to get these doors open, which we know have been for 40 years, by the way. And as Lawrence talked about, the doors have been open as we work through the construction of that fantastic, beautiful branch. But I have just a couple shout outs I want to give today. First of all, to our branch manager, who I had an opportunity to meet last week, uh, Christian, who's just amazing, a ball of energy. She's fantastic. And to Jordan, our community manager, again, the first community manager in the state of California. And we're super excited about all that you're going to do. And to the fantastic team there, uh, as I said, you've been handpicked. We had folks that wanted to be back in Crenshaw that raised their hand to move from parts around the country and around the state and the city 
to be part of this Crenshaw Community Branch. And I want to give a special shout out to our market director of banking, DJ Mercantile, who uh, grew up no more than a mile away from the Crenshaw branch that you're sitting in right now. Uh, and Andy Carney, a shout out to you, our regional director. Andy called DJ uh, just about six months ago and said, we need you in Los Angeles. We need to bring you back home and we need you to make this a success for the community. So to Andy and DJ, thank you so much for your commitment to the whole community uh, Crenshaw branch. Thank you for what you do and what you're going to continue to do. It is my pleasure now uh, to introduce you to Miles Warren, uh, who is our LA leader for the fellowship initiative. Uh, so congratulations to everyone today. I can't wait to be back in Crenshaw with you all. And Miles, over to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miles Warren III, and I lead the Fellowship Initiative in the West Region. TFI, the Fellowship Initiative, was created by J.P. Morgan Chase 10 years ago to prepare young men of color for college and career success. TFI exemplifies our firm's commitment to equity and expanding economic opportunity in underserved communities. TFI breaks down barriers and prepares young men to be successful, uh, to be able to go off to post-secondary opportunities in college. We're taking a holistic approach by providing academic success, college and career readiness, and tutoring to Black and Latinx students um, at a critical point in their lives. I joined the firm seven years ago to launch TFI in Los Angeles, and it's been one of the highlights of my career, just because I know we're, make, we're truly making a difference. Today, I would like to introduce you to two young men who are alum of our program. Michael Young, who I'm excited to introduce, who is a senior at Cal State Dominguez Hills, and he's majoring in kinesiology, and Ronaldo Lopez, who is a freshman at UC Berkeley and majoring in mechanical engineering. I will let these young men tell you how TFI has impacted their lives and impacted their communities. Michael. Thank you, nice to meet you everyone. Uh, my name is Michael, Ooh, I cannot talk today, excuse me. Uh, my name is Michael Young, uh, class of 2021, Cal State Dominguez Hills, kinesiology major. I can say that TFI has changed my life, changed my life tremendously. Uh, I grew up in South Central, literally five minutes away. I like to say right around the corner. This is my community, this is my home. And one thing that I feel like I needed was a family. You know, growing up, going to View Park Preparatory High School, right down the street, like I mentioned, you know, I was a very shy, introvert type of guy, you know, and I remember the day that TFI came to my school. I was in my Spanish class at 10 o'clock in the morning. My principal came and said, Michael, come to my office. I thought I was in trouble. I'm like, I just woke up. I just finished my breakfast. But then not knowing that this opportunity was going to change my life. I met so many people, you know, you know, I became a different person. I'll say that TFI has really helped me become the young man I am today. They have opened my door, opened my life to many different opportunities when it comes to networking. And, and I feel like that's the stable part of TFI, networking. I met so many different groups, so many different organizations that have built me into the person I am today. And I wanna thank TFI and also thank my single mother, Sharana McCoy, for also helping me and building me into this person today. But like I mentioned, networking and friendships. Relationships is what they really helped me you know, in life, I was scared, you know, not knowing what can happen to me, especially because of the color of my skin. And, you know, having that support system through TFI, I'm shaking right now, because, you know, it's a sensitive topic. This is something that I talk about all the time and it really, it really brings me great joy, you know, knowing that they help me out. Hello. Hello, my name is Ronaldo Lopez. I go to the University of California, Berkeley, and I'm studying mechanical engineer. Go Bears. Uh, so TFI has really impacted my life. Miles has impacted my life and my mentors, uh, other more, more, many more programs has allowed me to be confident in who I am. Not only that, but allowed me to see myself in positions that I wouldn't be able to see, uh, that I didn't see myself in before. I look up to Miles a lot because I would one day want to be, help out the community like Miles does and like just impact the youth the way they do. Um, but yeah, just impacted me through uh, leadership, 
allowed me to um to allowed me to know the importance of resilience and also the importance of community because um again we're nothing without our community if that makes sense <laughs> So thank you. Thank you all. Um, this is a impact uh, program that's impacting the community. Um, I'm just really excited about the opportunity. We're currently at, in the process of just recruiting our next cohort, um, which will be graduating in 2023. And we're really excited that we can have a further impact on our community, more specifically, this very particular community. So now I would like to introduce you to Ricardo Berrigan, who will be leading a fireside chat on mentorship and small business. Good morning, everybody. Rick Berrigan here, Managing Director in J.P. Morgan's Private Bank here in Los Angeles, and also a leader of J.P. Morgan's Advancing Black Pathways. I had the opportunity this week to sit down with two amazing Los Angeles sports legends, Marcellus Wiley and Derek Fisher. I had an opportunity to ask them about their insights, about what community means to them, and also their expertise on how to overcome the challenges of today's world. Let's go to the videotape. Thank you for uh, eulogizing me while I'm still living, Rick. I appreciate <laughs> it so much. Um, uh, I tell you, I go straight to the heart with it. Um, I remember those moments growing up uh, when you were sitting there ambitious, full of hope and, and writing down your goals and just dreaming every single day. And I remember the times that I was feeling like the fork in the road kid, a guy who wanted to go right all the time, but at times uh, was posed with the decision to go left and wishing I had proper guidance, wishing that I had full assistance and understanding in all endeavors in all facets of life, whether it was on the football field, sometimes in the classroom or my social experiences, but never was I introduced to the understanding of money and financial literacy. And so looking back now, at those times, uh, I want to make sure that I fill that gap, that I fill that void for those who now will be encouraged to learn about financial literacy. It's about really playing to the, my higher angels and just realizing that we have to do this together in terms of understanding and, and total understanding of what money really does for you as it translates into the real world. So in short, I was just a fork in the road kid who always wanted someone to extend a helping hand to let me get past the next hurdle. And I just want to make sure I'm a tour guide on that journey for success for everyone else involved. Part of why we're here is also to celebrate community, okay? And, and to recognize that a lot of what important things that communities do is pay it forward. So when you paying it forward, what kind of advice would you give to some of our listeners and viewers out there about you know, how they can be successful on their journeys? Yeah, oh, so many nuggets that I've learned and picked up over over the years. Um, I think like in short, two or three. yeah, man. You know, God. One is life is a competition between you and yourself. All oh, that narrows your focus, man. It, it makes you really run your race in your lane. Uh, it, it, Mark Twain said that, and it really hit home to me. I think I've uh, come across that in, in high school. And why does that matter? Because in a world where everything is coming at you from external forces, especially now with social media, people can't separate the signal from the noise and what's up and what's down. Um, it's, it's just so important to narrow that focus in on what do you want? And uh, identity is another one in terms of not just who you are, but who you are not. I don't think yeah. enough people focus in on who are you and who don't you want to be? And if you can make those stark in contrast, if you can make that distinction, like this is my line, I won't cross this line. And no one's perfect, but you know how to redirect, you know how to reset yourself and get back on the right road. Uh, it will help you because Bill Belichick always says this, more games in the NFL are lost than won. What does that mean? And in a game of life, most people won't finish the race. Uh, most people won't achieve their goals, not because of talent, but because they won't have the perseverance, the discipline to just finish the race. Even if you're walking, even if you're crawling, even if you barely can reach the finish line, you will outpace 90% of the people because most people won't have that narrow focus, that discipline, that desire, and that perseverance. So in a world that tells you it's all about talent, I'm here to tell you it's all about finishing first. We, we appreciate you. 
appreciate you and, you know, really, really, really look forward to seeing you down the road and continuing to uh, partner with you. So thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you too as well. Uh, continued success and continue to inspire others, man. Look forward to it. Thank you, Marcellus, for sharing those insights. Now let's check out what Derek had to say in our conversation. Tell us a bit about how managing your legacy has impacted your finances and also the community that you actually live in. Yeah, I mean, I think when I was younger, honestly, Rick, I, you know, you, you, you hear the word legacy, but you don't really know what it means. Mm. Um, it, it sounds very big and daunting and um, almost unachievable in some ways. Like it's, you know, that's for, you know, somebody else. That's not for me. Um, you know, my legacy was, you know, trying to make it to the NBA at one point. And then, you know, you make it to the NBA and then you're trying to win a championship. Like the, this legacy thing uh, is always kind of on the move. It's not really a final destination, but there's a point in life. Um, I think for me, it's, you know, it's having children. It's, it's getting married. It's, you start to realize that your life is not just about you. And then that's when what true legacy really starts to sink in is that it's about the impact that you have on someone else. It's the value you add to other people's lives that really define your legacy. Um, and unfortunately, the, one of the most recent examples we have, you know, is the loss of Kobe Bryant and Gianna Bryant, whose you know birthday just passed, and all of the folks and families that were impacted that horrendous day in, in January of 2020. Um, that's legacy. The fact that yeah. he isn't here anymore. Um, and he's still, his daughter, his family, they're still impacting so many people on this planet. Um, and so that has, that has enhanced my desire to, to do more, to be of more value to more people, um, you know, over this last year after suffering that loss. Uh, so, so legacy has become much more uh, of a tangible thing for me. I don't feel old. I don't feel like today is my last day. But I'm, I really am making a more concerted effort to, to live that way. Um, so that means that each day I have to do more for someone else. You know, what kind of advice would you give them on how they could really reach and reach for their goals and aspire for their dreams? I think now it's, a, we, it's okay for us to encourage people to fail fast and aggressively, right? Like we're part of uh, when I was young, you know, my dad used to uh, challenge me to make mistakes being aggressive. Mm -hmm. Mm. Right. And and sometimes when I was on the court, I was a little timid. I, I wasn't the biggest guy. I wasn't the tallest guy. So at times I just wasn't as assertive, you know, as I needed to be in this situation. And I think we've learned that sometimes in life, in business, financially, uh, even at home at times, like really trusting your instincts and, and trusting what you really believe to be true and have some passion and, and some conviction about it. And, and step into that and, and embrace then the challenges and or the responses that come from that decision. I think that's really important uh, when you think about being successful. Like it, everyone um, has really struggled to become whoever they are in whatever they do. It, it, it was never easy along the way. Um, and I think the ability to absorb adversity and adjust and adapt uh, really make you stronger. It, it really does. Um, and so I would encourage folks that are trying to find a way, trying to start a business, you know, trying to create an additional uh, stream of revenue or income for their family um, to, to go after it, to, to follow that dream. And that's what this part of this conversation is about, is that opportunity and access to do that and, and opening up um, opportunities for banking in the community, in the places where people are, where our people are, um, that's an important part of being able to go after your dreams. Um, and so that's why the work that JP Morgan Chase is doing uh, and by impacting so communities and making resources available, um, can't do it without that. And so um, in sport, we need resources in order to be successful out there on the court um, and in life and in the community, we need resources as well. And that's what this is all about. Explain to the audience what you think the importance of having a relationship with a bank is. Why is that important? And then how is that important in the context of understanding, you know, what financial health means? Yeah, I mean, I, in my opinion, the importance of um, having access to banking and resources in um, all communities, but in particular um, in communities of, of color and, and, and 
black and brown people and minorities and folks that have just not been able to, um, again, have the access that they deserve. Uh, and so to me, it's important because that's where real growth starts is the access to the opportunity to step into what it is you, you envision or that you're trying to do. Um, and you know, one of the best analogies and metaphors for it is sport, right? Like the, the, it makes a difference if for a young person, if there's a gym close by, if, if there's a park close by, um, nutrition, physical health, if there's a grocery store nearby where you can get fresh produce and things that are healthy for you to eat, as opposed to only inconvenient foods, is what I like to call them, not convenience foods, but, <laughs> but things that are not good for you. I, like, so think about banking in that same way, right? You, you need to have the access to that thing that can drive your growth and accelerate where it is you want to be. And banks provide the resources, the education, the opportunity to develop in those areas when it comes to finance. Um, and we, we, we have to be better um, you know, in homes in terms of teaching our kids the, the information that is needed, but it definitely helps that if within you know, a certain mile radius within our village that our kid it can also get that information and that education from somewhere else and, and, and they can see that that is available um, I just think it, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, so uh, again, I think you guys deserve a lot of credit for taking the steps that you're taking to make sure that access is there. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time and uh, really hope to see you soon. And Great. good luck to the Sparks in the season it, this year. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll all be watching. Really appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity again to be a part of this. Um, continue to do the work that you're doing and everyone that at Advancing Black Pathways and the Path Forward. And uh, congratulations to uh, the folks at, uh, at the Crenshaw branch and uh, look forward to seeing you in there one day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jonathan Morales, Head of Community Banking California for JP Morgan Chase & Co. That's awesome. My grandma on the back side of that chair, so I thank you guys. Um, hey, so you guys have heard a constant theme of support, uplifting communities. And really what, what I think is beautiful and amazing as we transition to this next segment is what you need to think about is our communities become stronger when we all act in the service of others. You heard that through TFI, you heard that through Derek Fisher and Marcellus Wiley's testimony. You're gonna hear a little bit more about that with some of our local communities. So you saw some celebrities, some notoriety, but we actually have some local celebrities. And as I was preparing for today, one of the amazing things is we have just a team of organizations that all raise their hand to say, what can we do to support you? And while we're gonna highlight a, a select few, we just wanna say thank you to all those organizations that are watching via Zoom today. So one of the first things that I wanna introduce is we had an opportunity to partner with Local Initiative Support Corporation, otherwise known as LISC. LISC Los Angeles right now is what runs Ascend. You heard Jamie talk a little bit about Ascend. Our Ascend program is a JP Morgan Chase sponsored initiative. We're currently operating in 15 cities across the country. But what we did is we partnered with LISC LA so that we made a grant to them for $1 million so they can actually uplift the local communities here in South Los Angeles. Here it for them. Now here's the beauty of LISC. LISC is so much more than a community development financial institution. So as you guys listen today, I want you guys to pay attention to some of the things that they're doing. LISC partners with different corporations, different non-for-profits, making introductions so they can provide comprehensive strategies to uplift our communities. I think it's important today that we hear from their leader. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Tanua Thrash and Took, our executive director of LISC LA. Tanua. Thank you so much for uh, that introduction. I was uh, excited to see that you've been doing a lot of research on List Los Angeles. Um, so that's great. It's always great to know that you're welcome into the room. Um, so as was stated, I'm Tanua Thrash Intuk, Executive Director for LISC here in Los Angeles. And I came to this conversation today very prepared to talk about the Ascend program, Ascend Los Angeles, that as you heard, JP Morgan Chase has helped to fuel. 
But I think because of sort of the moving remarks that I've heard earlier, I just want to lay the context for why this place, why this moment, and why this vision that Lawrence and many of you have had here at Chase is so important. I grew up here in this community, 98th and Figueroa, not too far away. It is in this community uh, that I had the opportunity to be able to work as executive director of the West Angeles Community Development Corporation. So all of this activity that we see on the Crenshaw Corridor is in part me and others who have dedicated their careers. And it is this very branch where I had the opportunity to get my first mortgage uh, because I bought my first home here in this community. So it is fitting, it is perfect uh, to be here today and talk about the importance of making sure that we are reaching out and that we are welcoming to community. Thank you, Chase. But for today, a part of what I wanted to share is what is Ascend Los Angeles and what is LISC. As Jonathan has already said, we do comprehensive community development. Not only do we bring the C and capital to communities that need it and when they need it most, but we also bring the capacity, the opportunity to open doors to make sure that they have access. The Ascend LA program brings together nonprofit lenders, uh, education providers, as well as other institutions, including anchor institutions that have contract opportunities and resources to help our small businesses grow. The Ascend has what's called a 3M model. It is all about making sure that our businesses have the management skills that they, so that's the one M, that they have the money, so that is the second M and that they have the market opportunities. That's the third M. And all too often, our small businesses have been left out of critical supply chain access, not only here in Los Angeles, but throughout the country. And we know from research that this is what fuels businesses to be able to grow those jobs and tackle that racial wealth gap. This model was developed by the University of Washington and is supported by the philanthropic support of organizations like J.P. Morgan Chase. And because of that, this Ascend model is now national. And it is uh, really a, a research-driven approach uh, where the university has determined that this is what it's going to take to help people of color, women, and those who are in low-end communities be able to eliminate those barriers so that they have access to be able to grow. So here in Los Angeles, we have implemented Ascend LA with that 3M solution. And we've got all of those partners that I just described. In 2021, uh, Loyola Marymount University and their business school is serving as our educational partner. They're providing business school level expertise uh, to our small businesses in the program. The County of Los Angeles, the Internal Services Department, has opened their resources and is committed to ensuring that the small businesses in our program are able to access those contracts going forward. And we wanna thank CDC Small Business. They are also a capital provider working alongside LIST to provide that money that businesses need and Slate Z an organization working right here in South LA so that we're recruiting from the community. In 2020, we're proud to say that during a pandemic, we brought in 19 small businesses to help them make sure that they had a strong foundation, that they knew how to compete for capital, and that they could start to bid on contracts. 100% of those 19 businesses were BIPOC-led, with 13 being Black-owned businesses, two being Latino-owned businesses, and four being API-owned businesses. And 73% of them, ladies, they were women-owned enterprises. So we've been able to accomplish much even during a pandemic. 50% uh, of our 2020 cohort, they got new certifications. So now they're certified to do business all over town. 60% hired new employees at a time when we know businesses were shedding employees. 75% bid on new contracts and 25%, a clear quarter, of them have received new contracts and are on their way to growing their business. Their participation in this program means that every business has acquired a new skill. Uh, let me tell you about two of our participants. One is Viviana Harvey. 
She was uh, on a news uh, station uh, with me at Spectrum News. We had a chance to interview her. You've got to see it. The interview is fantastic. She's the owner of the Sparkling Clean uh, Services uh, and Carpet Care. She said that prior to this program, she had great difficulty being able to grow her business. She participated in Ascend LA, and she said after participating, she's now competing for contracts in the millions. In fact, Viviana said, we have contracts out there now in the millions. And every time I think about that, I could just cry because we didn't really think that we could do anything like that. We didn't know we could be anywhere in the ballpark and didn't even know that we could have such a start. For another owner in our Ascend LA program, Desiree Sadler, uh, she also noted how important Ascend was. She said, as a small business, we get the door slammed in our face constantly, but Ascend, Ascend provided us access, and that's number one. So for today, we wanna to thank Chase again for believing in the LISC model, for investing in this work and knowing that in 2021, we've got two more cohorts coming along. Uh, we've got hundreds of applications in right now that we're going through and we can't wait to help grow our businesses through this 3M model. Thank you so much. That's awesome. So as you guys can hear, Tanu is clearly passionate about uplifting communities. You, so you hear a lot about changing the trajectory, right? Changing the trajectory for some small businesses. I sincerely appreciate the testimonies too, because that makes it real and that demonstrates the power of possibility. Up next, we're actually gonna to talk to another business. And so I have the pleasure of introducing South LA Cafe. Now South LA, go ahead and let's give them a round of applause. It's awesome, you guys getting excited. Let's take this off. So with South LA Cafe, one of the things that I would love to highlight is because I got to know the owners. They're much more than a cafe. South LA Cafe is also a foundation. South LA Cafe is a staple in South Central Los Angeles, uplifting communities, doing their part to continue to honor the tradition and culture of our local communities by creating a space where people can feel comfortable. They can hear um, readings from local authors, appreciate the art, um, and also just have a place where they know it's their own and people know their name. Now, the other thing that the foundation does, and this is really where I was particularly intrigued, is they talk about changing the community through a couple of different things. And so the foundation in particular is really focusing in on their mission of people, place, and prosperity. And so I really want you guys to think about that because this is a small business that's really thrived during the pandemic. They continue to see ways that they can reach out and help other businesses do well. And so I have the pleasure of introducing their owners, Joe and Celia Ward-Wallace. Please join me and I would love to have you guys share a little bit about your story. Let's so welcome them to the stage. Oh, hello everyone. Oh, nice to <laughs> Hi, we're so excited to see everybody. This is our local branch. And so we know a lot of people's faces here. Um, thank you so much for that great introduction. And just in case you guys don't know that much about us, we really uh, believe in for the people by the people. So some people understand that comment, right. but since we're talking about the local Crenshaw community, the South LA community, the South Central community, I think it's important to know our background. So you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? So, well, we, we, I grew up in this neighborhood, um, South Central. Um, I've been, we've been here uh, actually near our cafe for the last 25 years uh, together. Um, my mom, uh, single mom, raised me in this community, um, taught me the, the, the work ethic about businesses. Uh, she was an entrepreneur from day one. I mean, we, she, so, she sold uh, sweet potato pies. That's how, that's how my mom was. She, she was all about the hustle. Um, and my, and my parents have a 40 year or actually 50 year now yeah, legacy uh, in the civil rights movement. And so I actually grew up in the community uh, and I'm very, you know, a welcomed guest here in this community. So when I met my husband 24 years ago, yes. Did uh, I say 25? Well, we're, we're rounding up. Uh, <laughs> Feels like 25. Yeah, we, uh, he, he was already a lifelong entrepreneur. I was really risk adverse. He said, let's get into the real estate market. I said, you're crazy. 
crazy, let's do these safe city jobs and just to get that 30 years and pension. And he said, we could do both, right? And so we got into the real estate market, we rose it up, we crashed and burned. Um, but through there, that was what really sparked us into the resiliency that is possible through entrepreneurship. And we actually both ended up leaving both of our um, safe city jobs. She say safe job. It, I, I left a job as a fireman. So yes, well, safe, <laughs> sa safe, safe. We're in the banking world. You know, right, you right, guys got right. what we're talking about here. But all of that to be said, uh, the inspiration between, between, between uh, behind the cafe was twofold. It was around entrepreneurship, but it was also around social justice and community building. Right. Uh, he always wanted to open up a coffee shop. You want to tell a little bit bite about that? Yes, I, you know, the crazy guy that I am. Uh, I thought I'd open up a small little cafe, you know, 600 square feet, you know, would have poor coffee, and and some Costco muffins. And then I mean, and that then, was my idea. Yeah. And then and then and then ladies and then the wife got involved and she said if we're going to Yeah, if we're going to invest <laughs> in a space this needs to be a community space. And right. are you kidding me? You know what we could do in this community? We live here. Right. We know what the people need, right? Because we live here. We don't have access to food, fresh, healthy, affordable food. We don't have access to spaces that are safe for black and brown and, and lower income people, you know, and we don't have uh, all of the opportunities that these people right here deserve. And we know because we're of the population, right? So we started the cafe. We knew it was going to be a hit. Everybody thought we were crazy. They said, why would you put your life savings plus some an SBA loan and credit cards and all that <laughs> stuff into this corner? of Western and King right next to Popeye's fried chicken, you know, who, who would want to do that there? And we said, we do, we, we, we live here. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, it, and, and my husband said, you know, like field of dreams, you know, if, if you build it, they will come. Uh, and so, you know, God blessed us. We opened the doors in December, 2019. We were off to a massive success. We literally were profitable from day one. Thank God. Because the year leading up to that, you know, we were like going crazy with each other. Yes. Um, and then four months Almost in. Almost didn't finish it. Yeah. Four months in uh, the pandemic hit. Right? right. And so here are, you know, we had done 17 events in, in, four, in four months and the pandemic hit. We had to pivot. But that 22 years of doing business and having the highs and lows, the failures and the successes and all the bumps and the bruises, we had what we needed to transition. So quickly and share with them our, our star uh, the way that we pivot through the grocery box and the grocery giveaway. Tell them you know, she's way. really good at this. But she, she gets me going. <laughs> um, the, we, the pivot, how, did, how can I say this really happened? This, this was- It was a download. It was basically a download. We, yeah. had, we, we, we knew that we were about to close the stores. The city told us that we had to close the inside of, of, of the cafes. And so um, I guess, you know, like she said, our failures, we've had so, folks, failures are important, you know, because they really get you prepared later. I mean, you know, so the failures that we had in the past, when COVID hit, we were just like, oh, well, you know, what are we going to do next? So we took the next week or so figuring out ways, pivoting, we, we opened up or we started the, uh, we the started Joe our, app. At the Joe app where we can order from the curb, but the big download that I'm trying to get him to pull out here, just, which, is, which is the South LA grocery box. Okay. Right. So we created this $35 South LA grocery box, fresh produce, all of the basic essentials. And we set it up where you could buy it or you could sponsor it for a neighbor in need. And what we saw was it exploded. <laughs> I yeah. mean, people, it was like 70% of the, the orders were sponsored orders. And then, you know, nice problem to have, right? I have all these orders, but guess what? Now you have to deliver that food. And we had no, we had no real plan for that. So I was the one out delivering those boxes. And we, and deci then, we decided why not just do it on the curb of the cafe. Uh, and so we created the South LA grocery giveaway where we've been doing between 150 to 250 grocery boxes every single week for the oh, last no. 47 weeks. We've served over 45,000 people, 45,000 people from our local community. And I know we're at time, but I just wanna say, this is a high dignity experience. We had somebody come yesterday, they were filming, they said, we've seen food distributions all over the world. We've never seen what you guys have done here. You got music going, everybody's high-fiving, the people in the line are grooving, like 
they come week after week. It's it's multiracial. It's you got volunteers. So we're on to something. And right. all of that is to say that transitioned us into realizing we are a for-profit business, but we also wanted to create a nonprofit. And so that was what we were talking about when he was referencing the foundation. That is the South LA Community Foundation. Okay. <laughs> and so the South LA Community Foundation is going to aim to take our food distribution program under the nonprofit arm. And as well, we're going to create workforce development, entrepreneurship training, business building, incubation, and financial literacy programs. So we definitely want to talk to our friends at LISC and yes. you know partner up <laughs> on things to do together. But we're in it for the long haul. We're for the people by the people. And if you don't know about South LA Cafe and our foundation, now you do, right? There you go. There you go. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give it up. That was high energy, right? So hopefully you guys are by now seeing a theme. It's nobody's mission to do this on their own, right? As we come together, you saw the power of partnership. You saw our business owners reaching out to our partner from LISC LA and saying, we need to talk. As we were preparing for this event, it was so difficult to find an opportunity to figure out what we were gonna discuss in a small window of time because we have a shared passion and that's to uplift the community. Now, when you start to think about this community, it would be remiss of us to not have a staple from the community to close out this section for our small businesses. For those of you, for those of you guys that are gonna hear this name, you're all gonna applaud right now when I say it, but Doolin's on Crenshaw, right? So Mr. Doolin is here and I wanna invite him up because Doolin's on Crenshaw has been a staple in South LA for more than 30 years. They've survived four recessions and they continue to be a community staple today. And so I know community means a lot to you, Mr. Doolin. So the floor is yours. I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, thank you very much. Wow. I hear that uh, term community, community staple and icon and things like that thrown around a lot. And I just, you know, I, I, it, it, it's really amazing. But uh, my family has operated businesses in the Crenshaw district for just about 50 years. And, uh, and so I want to thank the Chase Community Center for inviting me here today to be a part of this program. Since I was 15 years old, all I ever wanted to do was to own my own business. And so I went to Howard University, I got a degree in business, and then I moved to New York City and worked for Chase Manhattan Bank, where I traveled around the world. But my goal was always to come home and to join the family business. I can remember watching my parents, Adolph and Mary Doolin, struggle to open their first little hamburger stand on Martin Luther King. Boulevard near Crenshaw. I saw firsthand how the lack of access to capital limited their growth and possibilities. But my father was an optimistic person and he was a go-getter and he believed in himself. And so he didn't let the, the inability to, to obtain capital stop him. And so he drew, he and my mom drew down on their savings they drew down on their pensions and they opened Hamburger City in the community. Um, the, uh, the hamburger business was a tough business and opening that business in, in a rough neighborhood was something that I will never forget. I remember seeing how my dad coped and how he functioned in that environment and one day I drove to work as a teenager and was shocked at the sight of seeing my dad standing on the side of the building, turning up a bottle of wine in a, in a paper bag. And he was standing there drinking with two of the local winos from the neighborhood. And so to my horror, I said, dad, what are you doing? And he said to me, son, uh, this is how you build trust in the community. He said, and these guys watch my business when I'm not here. And then he, he paused and he laughed a little bit. And he said, son, I always take the first drink. <laughs> and so I have never forgotten that. I've never forgotten that. And that lesson taught me the, port, the importance of not only giving back to the community, but being a part of the community. You have to be a part of the community while you give back to the community. So over the last 30 years, as I have owned my own business, 
I've done my best to be a part of my community while also giving back. I'm really proud of the fact that last year during the pandemic, I was one of 40 restaurants selected to serve senior meals in the city of Los Angeles. And I was amazed at the count when I found out that we, together, we served just under 4 million meals to seniors in the city of Los Angeles. That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, we also partnered with an organization called World Central Kitchen, and we served several thousand meals in the local community on Crenshaw, on Vernon and Fifth Avenue and around the city. And so we did our part to try to help others as, we, as others helped us, actually. I believe it is because of our commitment to the community that we, we received tremendous support over the last year as we dealt with the coronavirus ourselves. Uh, because of the support, uh, our soul food restaurants, our three soul food restaurants did not have to close. Our hot veal chicken, our brand new hot veal chicken restaurant that we just opened in December of 2019, which should have failed given that it was so new, did not have to close. We did not have to lay off any of our more than 100 employees. And we actually grew. Uh, we are uh, in two months, God willing, we'll be closing Doolin's on Crenshaw for six months to do a $2 million renovation. We were able to part, purchase two buildings. We're building a parking lot and we're going to create something beautiful for the community. And just, just outside, uh, you, you'll see one of my two food trucks that I just had built this past year uh, that uh, we are going to place outside the Doolins on Crenshaw uh, location as we do our renovation. And the trucks are very popular. We just did our first uh, production with HBO a couple of weeks ago, which was totally unexpected. And we're starting to get calls like that. And this is all because of the community support that, we, that we're being given. So. I, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, being here for so long has, has its advantages. And uh, um, I want the, the, uh, the branch, you know, Chase to know that this community is full of opportunity for you. There are a lot of people here with good ideas and they're all around you. Every large business started off just like mine. I believe that the key to small business growth and success is having access to capital and a good financial partner. The value, of a, a, uh, the value of capital and financial membership cannot be under, mentorship cannot be understated. The financial mentorship I received from Chase helped me be named the Minority Business of the Year by the US Chamber of Commerce. And this is why I come into this branch just about every day. <laughs> Chase has been a good financial partner to me. This new uh, Chase Banking Center takes financial partnership to a whole new level. And we were hearing things about community impact and community building. And we hear things, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, just, just the differences in, in wealth building and things like that. This is how you start it. This is how you get that started. And I'm very happy that you created this model. And I can see that your business model is to give back to the community while uplifting others. And so I thank you for having me here today. And I really appreciate it. And thank you very much. Oh, thank you for that amazing story and testimony and congratulations, Mr. Doolin, for all the success you've had and we wish you continued success. Let's give it up for Mr. Doolin again and really all of our speakers. So you've heard from some of our amazing external partners and one of the things that I just I feel like Greg Doolin set me up perfectly for our next introduction. So we also have a team and we feel like in order to make a difference, you have to first and foremost start with a team that's of the community, that's from this community, that grew up here, that understands what it is to make change. And the beauty of this, this branch is it is a first step for us. 
but every big journey starts with a single step. And we, I wanna introduce you guys to the amazing leaders that are gonna help us do that. So let me introduce you to the real chase stars of today. Our amazing branch manager, Chris Dan Fuston, and our community manager, Jordan King. All right. Hey, well, uh, thank you so much, Jonathan, and good morning uh, to all of the best parts of South LA and our Crenshaw team here in the room and all of our friends and allies who are joining us on Zoom from across the country and showing your support. Uh, my name is Jordan King, and I am humbled to be the Los Angeles Community Manager uh, serving our city from right here in our brand new Crenshaw Community Center. Um, like, like so many of the speakers that you heard and like many of you, I am a born and bred and forever proud Angelino, who's a mother, who's uh, back in the room there, um, came here to provide me with every opportunity um, that allowed me to lead what is now a 15 year career in banking that has taken me across this country to, to, to meet and to work with so many talented people who contribute uh, to the benefit of their communities every day. And um, that's exactly what brought me back here to LA. Uh, you know, my life's work, has never been as rewarding and fulfilling as it is in this moment to serve this community uh, with this team. Uh, you know, it's not hard to see when you look out of these windows and you look around this room that the whole block feels like it's on a mission. And uh, I, I think I speak for the team when I say that we are humbled and have a renewed sense of purpose uh, to put our feet on the concrete alongside all of you and carry out that mission for our neighborhoods. Um, knowing that one day we'll be able to look back and, and say that we had a real impact and that um, you know, we executed with, with substance and purpose um, to improve the financial lives of uh, those who we stand shoulder to shoulder with every day in many ways, um, in ways that they may have never thought possible. Every single day, the team that makes up uh, Crenshaw here um, come in to, to pour into the people and businesses um, that make up the new expanding Crenshaw corridor from Vermont to Lamert Park to Inglewood and, and every neighborhood and block in between, um, we are here to serve the community as more than a bank, uh, but instead to provide an ecosystem of support um, for our clients who we consider to be family, um, but also for our neighbors who maybe bank elsewhere or don't bank at all. It really is all the same to us as long as the cause advances to close the racial equity gap right here in our neighborhood. Um, you know, you, you heard Kevin Hart and you heard Jamie Dimon both share that this is indeed the largest black and brown and intact black and brown community west of Chicago or Chi-Town as I like to call it. Um, you know, that means that we have a very strong underlying foundation but we know that there are more things that we can do to make that foundation even stronger. So, you know, strong community needs successful businesses that are rooted in the community like Doolin's and like South LA Cafe, um, who also represent local ownership of those businesses. Uh, we need uh, community residents who call this place home, but also feel a sense of ownership, right? For the ground that is under their feet, to uh, create longstanding legacies as, as Derek Fisher shared um, with their friends and family um, through ownership and uh, through access to affordable homes. And, and finally, uh, community requires us um, to support and to provide the financial wherewithal um, to make these conditions a reality and most importantly, a very permanent. So we at Chase, uh, make no mistake, we do not believe that financial literacy and financial health should be inherited, right? Um, our team and I take uh, a lot of responsibility to ensure that everyone that we touch day to day um, come away with a healthier relationship with their money uh, and that we support their broader confidence about their money and ultimately their broader mental and physical health as well. Our, our mission is to provide access to uh, education tools that empower those around us and, and fuel their goals, especially when we think about the future generations of South Los Angeles. So some of the tools and some of the resources that we'll include will be uh, classes and uh, advice sessions covering a range of topics um, from our money mentalities and our values 
to uh, budgeting and saving and credit, um, to helping more people move into their dream homes and helping our emerging entrepreneurs um, have access to the mentorship and to the capital that they need to grow into their future. So, you know, last I would say that we also are enabling our community partners and businesses um, to leverage the various parts of this 4,700 square feet of event space um, to carry out their work that also benefits closing the racial wealth gap and builds our community together. So the, the Crenshaw team and I invite you to come and join us uh, to not only take advantage of our facilities, but to talk to our financial experts um, who, let me tell you right now, are second to none. As, as Lauren shared, we brought in the best talent and the best leaders uh, locally, who, in my opinion, are led by uh, one of the greatest leaders and someone who is a staple in the Los Angeles banking community and who I affectionately call the Queen of Crenshaw. I would like to introduce to the stage your Crenshaw branch manager and my dear friend, Christiane Fuston. Christiane, come take it away. Queen of Crenshaw, I gotta earn that right. I'm still in the midst of it. Um, a lot of things I'm gonna say today is repetitive. You're gonna hear the word serve a lot. But the one thing, if you can't hear it, hopefully you can see it on my face, is you guys have all brought joy to my heart for two reasons. One, we're all like-minded. Nobody is here by accident. Everybody standing, watching, sitting, filming, taking pictures is here for a reason and it's to make a difference. The second thing is I'm living my heart's desire, which is to serve. Not only to serve my team, but to serve my community. Like Jordan, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. And over the past 16 years, I've had the honor of growing my career here in the South LA area. During that time, I had a, a great chance to meet many different families from various backgrounds, watch startup businesses grow from the ground up. And I, I live and experience the beauty and the culture of this amazing city. And with that growth and opportunity, I know the best days are ahead of us. We're so excited about our community center and what we're able to offer our neighborhood, families, and businesses in the surrounding area. We start our layout, which looks and feels different from a typical bank. Our longtime clients and customers will see a modern design and state-of-the-art banking technology, which will reflect how we engage with our clients today and tomorrow. Other unique features include our pop-up space to showcase our local small businesses. Yeah, so excited about that. Uh, that will be able to allow them to have a storefront if maybe they have a web-based businesses. And during that interaction, they'll be able to showcase their products and services while they're connecting with our clients. Today, we gather in our new event zone and uh, right behind me is our community room, which is a large gathering space that can be used for workshops, meetings, events, and more. Last, but most importantly, our team. All of us are deeply and personally connected to this neighborhood, either by growing up, residing, being educated, or volunteering in the surrounding area. They invest their personal time to build the community in a way that can boost people's opportunities and change the narrative of how people see traditional banking. With their servant's heart, we only hope to change the community view of seeing us as just a bank, but as a safe haven for financial growth. My team is a reflection of this community, and I would like to take a moment and call out and acknowledge them. My right hand, Clayton, who is my lead associate banker. My associate bankers are what you guys used to know them as tellers, okay? They're no longer tellers, they're associate bankers. Olga, Jocelyn, Cindy, David, Tamara, Anaya, and Liz. Even though, 
even though Liz is not here today, but she is the staple in this branch and the icon because last week she celebrated her 34th year with Chase in this branch. And I forgot to mention, I call them the heartbeats because they're truly is what help us thrive in this branch. My bankers, phenomenal bankers, or what I like to call them are financial coaches, Vicki, Baron, and Adon. I'm so proud of them. We have become not just a team, but a family. This talented, you've heard this before, this talented handpicked group is passionate about this initiative. Our common goal is simple, impact lives and help create generational wealth. In order to do that, first we gotta be human. We gotta be human. And how do we start? We gotta listen. We gotta listen to what people say. We gotta ask them questions to understand their concerns, their worries, and be ready for what we hear. We gotta meet them at their level. And then once we do that, then we can find ways to help. Together, we all can change the world one neighborhood at a time. Our mission, as you heard this before, is to lead with the servant's heart, help families create a better financial future, and most importantly, help clients make the most of their money so they can make the most of their lives. I'm honored and it's a privilege to stand here today I am grateful for this opportunity. I thank all of you. And now I'd like to hand it back over to Jonathan Morales and Dr. Betty Rebe. About, can you hear me now? We've been hearing a lot today about community and its character. One of the pillars that I always talk about from a community is its values, and we've heard about those. You see, when an organization really focuses on its values and affects its values into their community, and understands the values of their community, when those two are matched, then magic can happen. Every single employee we have been hearing about has a common value system, and that is to really impact the community. A long time ago, I was 12 years old when I came to the United States with my mother from Bogota, Colombia. I walked into a branch like this two years later with my mother and we came to open up a savings account. We didn't feel like we belonged. We didn't feel like we belonged to the country. We had just come from Colombia and we didn't feel like we could belong to the bank, let alone to the community. But the bankers made us feel comfortable. They showed us their core values that matched our core values the core values of family, the core values of education, of really helping each other, the core values of helping us understand what is it like to open up a checking account? What is it like to save and how do we do it? My mother didn't know how to do it because my father took care of it back in Colombia. So I translated for her. Well, guess what? Every single customer that walks in this door could possibly be another 14 year old with her mother. We are here to affect change and we're here to affect change for generations to come. Any one individual that we talk to, any one individual that we have an opportunity and a blessing and humbly an opportunity to really impact through education, through giving them a source where they can too feel part of this community. They can too feel part, like they belong. The feeling of belonging is so important in our community and belonging to this amazing organization, belonging to this amazing place and to this amazing corporation is what we're here to do. So with that, I wanna turn it over to Jonathan.
Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Betty. I always love hearing her story too, because I think her story resonates with so many. I think a lot of us can appreciate what it is to come from humble roots and really try to work hard to change your trajectory. But the truth is what you've heard today from a lot of the different organizations that have spoken, all of our speakers is it's really not easy. And there's a large portion of this community that doesn't know what it is to dream. And the reality is, is this is a beautiful space now where they can feel safe, they can feel welcome. It's an extension of some of the other organizations today that are creating spaces just like that in their own, in their own backyard. But the reality is, is we understand that this is just step one on a journey. And I really wanna emphasize that. Yes, we have an amazing team. Yes, we have a lot of education that we can deploy, but everything's gonna start with us taking that first step and earning the right to illustrate that we're always gonna act in the best interest of the community that we're serving. We're gonna listen and we're gonna deploy the resources and the resolutions that the community wants. We're not here to serve our own agenda. We're here to make a change. And so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody here today. And I wanted to welcome you guys to, to the stage. I wanna bring back Jordan, Chris, Dan. We wanna christen this appropriately, guys. We're gonna do a ribbon cutting. So if you guys can join me, let's give it up for them. All right. So beyond Jordan and Chris Dan, we also have Danny Bakewell Jr. as we're located in the beautiful Bakewell building. And so we wanted to make sure that we honored that building by having him participate in our ribbon cutting. All right. You let me know when you're ready. All right. Woo! <laughs> All right. Hey, well, thank you so much, especially everybody on Zoom in here, a person for joining us. This will conclude, and we welcome you back to the Crenshaw Community Center very soon. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.